Hello everyone, welcome to this module on IAM policies. My name is Rohit Rahi and I'm part of the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure team. In the simplest format, the policy syntax looks something like this. Allow subject to do something verb on specific resource types in location, which can be tenancy or compartment. And you can also add a condition here to make it more complex. But let's break it down uh, into simpler terms and then we can look into each uh, in, in greater details. So as you can see here, first thing is there is no deny uh, syntax because everything is denied by default. So you have to really explicitly allow. Otherwise, as we saw in the previous module, if you don't write a policy that's as good as writing a deny policy, you are basically locked out. You cannot do your users cannot do anything in the Oracle Cloud infrastructure environment. So uh, subject here is your group, uh, your your group name and the verb uh, here, uh, we have basically four types of verb going all the way from inspect, read, use uh, to manage. Inspect basically means you can list your resources, read and inspect. Uh, most of the cases are very similar. Uh, read gives you some extra uh, capabilities like you can read, uh, get this, uh, the, the metadata for the actual resources. Uh, in use, when you write a verb called use, uh, you have the ability to read uh, plus the ability to work with existing resources uh, like you could, uh, you could update the resource uh, etc. depending on uh, the, the type of resource you are trying to to use and then manage includes all the permissions for the resource. Uh, so if you're not very sure which verb to use, you can go with manage uh, or you could go with use or you could even if you want to just restrict the, the access, you could go with something like inspect or read depending on your use cases. Now resource types uh, basically are uh, two kinds of resource types in OCI. One is the aggregate resource type and then the second one is the individual resource type. Uh, as you can guess, aggregate resource type uh, are tied to the various resources you have in OCI. So the simplest, again, the simplest way to, to look at it is if you want to give somebody access to everything in OCI, just go with this uh, resource type called all dash resources, which means every resource in OCI, all resources in OCI. If that is not what you want to give access to your users, you could go granular. So if you just want to restrict access to database, you could say database family, instance family, virtual network family, and so on and so forth. If you want to go very granular within virtual network family, you could have VCN, subnets, route tables, so on and so forth. The whole idea is you can be very granular and provide role-based uh, access control. And you can read more on the on the documentation uh, as to you know what specific uh, resource types are available, uh, what are the individual resource types, and how you combine uh, the various verbs uh, with these uh, resource types. There are, there are good documentation pages on those. Now, in reality, what is happening is when you write a policy giving a group access to a particular verb and resource type, you're actually giving that group access to one or more predefined permissions. We're just making it simpler for you. So what does that look like? So for example, uh, look at something like a volumes uh, family, block volume family. So the various verbs which are possible, again, shouldn't be surprised, is inspect, read, use, manage, the four tiers we had uh, on the previous slide. And behind the scene, you have permissions tied to each of these verbs. And again, behind the scene, uh, the permissions are tied to the API operation. So for example, as you go from inspect to read to use to manage, the level of access generally increases. So you see something like read plus. So use has everything here on inspect and read plus ability to update, as I was saying in the previous slide, uh, ability to write, uh, but not delete, for example, write or create. So if you go to manage, you could use everything in use plus you could you get two capabilities to create volumes and delete volumes. Now, everything in the cloud is you are calling APIs, right? It's all the web services. Now, each API operation requires the caller to have access to one or more permissions. So for example, if you want to list volumes or get volumes, these two APIs, you need you need to have this permission called volume inspect. If you want to create, create a volume, uh, you need uh, the, the create volume API needs access to volume underscore create 
permission. Uh, and how do you get that permission? By writing a policy which says uh, allow specific group to manage volume family in either a tenancy or account or compartment. So this is how behind the scene uh, policies work. This portion here on permissions API operations are all abstracted. So you don't have to go this granular uh, and you know figure out which APIs are tied to which permissions and which permissions are tied to which verbs because uh, it can get very complex very soon. Uh, so it just makes life easier uh, by giving you verbs. But remember behind the scenes there are permissions predefined uh, and then the APIs are tied uh, require those uh, specific permissions in order to be executed. Ex executed. Okay, so all right, let's look at some of the common policies. So very simple policy, let's start with you want network admins to manage a cloud network, right? So you would write something like allow group, let's say this is a group here, group name, to manage, this is your verb, highest level of access, virtual network family, means everything which is provided by virtual networks, your subnets, your route tables, your gateways, your uh, uh, you know different kinds of constructs, all part of the, the virtual network family. And you could write this policy either in a compartment or a tenancy, right? In this case, I'm doing it in a tenancy, uh, which means it's at account level, but you could also go very granular. Now, if you want users to launch compute instances, it gets a little bit more complex, right? First thing when you launch a compute instance is you need virtual network family because a instance is launched within a subnet. So you need to write a policy here. Now you see in this case, I don't need manage because this user is just using a subnet. It's not creating a new subnet uh, in most of the cases, right? So use is fine uh, because it doesn't need to create or delete. Uh, and then um, delete the subnet or the virtual cloud network. And then you need these other uh, verbs, right? So you need a manage here because you can create an instance, you can delete an instance, right? So you need that manage. Uh, and then you need a couple of other um, uh, policies. Uh, for example, if instances, probably you need to have block volumes uh, if you write creating any application. So you would use the volume family. And again, see volume family, you are not creating a new volume, you're probably, somebody has created that volume, you're using it, so you say use here. Uh, so you can see, you know, how um, you can write simple policies uh, and you can write uh, complex policies. And the link here, uh, if you go to this link, you can see a collection of various uh, policy. There's a whole list of something like 50 or 100 policies, uh, different scenarios which are all listed there. Lastly, you know, there is this concept of uh, advanced uh, policy syntax where you can write a conditional policy. Now, we again, in the level 200 videos, uh, we go into more details, but let me just quickly cover this here. So when you write a condition, you need to add variables. And when you are adding variables, there are two kinds of variables you can use. One is called request, one is called target. So request is something which is relevant to the request itself. Okay, so what does that mean? If you are, have an operation, uh, you are if you are listing, you are doing some API operation, like you are trying to list users, you could say something like request dot operations. This represents the API operation which you are executing. For example, list users. Target dot group dot name represents the name of the group. So you have target here. Group dot name is the name of the group, and to 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 specify that, you would use a keyword like target dot group.name. So a good example is, uh, and as you see here, variable name is prefixed accordingly with either the request, request.operation, or target uh, followed by a period. So request.operation, target dot something group name. Now you can see uh, the example here, allow group, this is a group name, to manage all resources, meaning they have permissions to do everything, basically they are administrators for this particular account, where Request dot region, meaning this is the re region where the request is being made, is Phoenix. So this means you have an admin for Phoenix, but they cannot do anything in the other 10 regions which are there. So again, if you go to this link, uh, you can see the policy references and you can all read a lot about advanced uh, policies. Let me uh, close this uh, module by quickly uh, showing you the demo where we left in the last module. So in the last module, we created a user um, uh, training user one and we created a group uh, called uh, training group we added that user 
uh, to the training group. And that's all we did. We didn't write a policy. We didn't touch anything on the compartments, none of that, right? So first thing let's do here is write a policy. Now you can see there are three policies here and I'm still in the root compartment. What does that mean? We'll talk more in the next module, so don't worry. Uh, but policies need to live somewhere. You need to attach it either to a compartment or a tenancy. You just cannot keep, you know, leave it hanging somewhere. You you have to attach it. Otherwise, uh, if you create a compartment, for example, don't attach a policy. Uh, it's not useful. So let's uh, create um, a policy here, training policy. And this is my training policy. And uh, I need to write a statement here, right? So uh, the first statement I want to write is allow group. Uh, we created this uh, group just a while back in the previous to manage. Now I don't want to do all resources. I just want to do virtual network family. And as I said, uh, let's allow this in the whole tenancy because um, uh, uh, it shouldn't matter, but let's just do this. So we created uh, we, we created a policy here, right? So what it's saying is this particular group uh, and all the users which belong to that group can create, manage a virtual network family. So they can create one, they can delete one, uh, they, they can update one and all that, right? So I'm logged in as, as training user one here. And earlier in the previous video, you saw that this user could not do anything in this uh, account because they had no policies written for their specific uh, group. But as you can see here, now I see various uh, various uh, networks. And if I click here and I say, uh, um, I want to create a test VCN and root is fine. I want to just create a network and click create virtual cloud network. You could see that I'm able to create uh, a virtual cloud network here. It's, with, with, you know, it's, it's that simple, right? The policy basically unlocks my permission so I can I can execute it and I can create a network. But if I go to the compute instance and I want to, let's say, create a compute instance, right? You see it's grayed out here. I cannot click on create instance and create one, even though it will show you a menu or something. Uh, you you know, you probably would not be able to, to create an instance uh, here, right? Uh, if, I, if I click on that, it will not let me do that. Uh, why? Because I really haven't written any permissions to uh, to allow me to create uh, instances. So let's change that. If I go back, I can add a policy statement here. And I have one which I just wrote before I was uh, doing this uh, class. So I create this uh, policy. It says allow group training group to manage instance family. And again, remember instance family, you could create an instance, you can delete an instance, you, you, you could basically, you know, do everything around the, the instances. Now, if I refresh this page, just look here, earlier it said I don't have any permissions. If I refresh this page, you can see that I would start seeing instances there and I can actually go and create instance now, right? It would let me, uh, let me uh, do that. So let me just quickly run it here. Um, give a default name, choose an AD. I'm not even choosing some of these, uh, you know, values there. This is the network we just created. I'm not giving an SSH keys or anything. It's just a dummy example. And I click create. And you would see within a few seconds, uh, my instance would be up and running. So this is a quick example. Uh, we wrote two policies. First to unlock the virtual cloud network, give the permissions to create a VCN. And then we couldn't do anything beyond VCN. We wrote another policy uh, to give me access to the to the to the to create instances and now I'm able to create instances so this is how policies work it gets more complex with conditional policies uh, where you attach the policies and all that we'll cover those in the subsequent uh, lectures thanks for uh, joining this uh, particular lecture if you have some time please join the next lecture where we talk about compartments thank you